In this video, I'm going to discuss whether you do really need a tripod for landscape photography. And really, there's only one way to find out, and that is by going on a walk, but leaving the tripod in the van. So let's go. Hi guys, welcome to another video and welcome to the North Pennines. Now this part of the North Pennines I haven't particularly explored before, so I'm very apprehensive about my decision to leave my tripod in the van. Now the reality is I love that tripod and some of my favourite shots have been taken with it. So the thought of heading out without it to shoot landscape photography, it's, it's really quite alien to me. For me, taking my camera and tripod is what I always do when I'm out in the hills. I wouldn't dream of leaving the tripod at home. But that's what I've done today and uh, yeah, I think it's an important question really. Do you really need a tripod for landscape photography? That was an interesting walk. The weather's just a bit wild at the moment. The wind is horrendous. Which, to be honest, if I was using a tripod, would probably make life quite difficult because I'd be worried about the camera actually tipping over. So perhaps that is one plus point for not using a tripod, the fact that you can actually hold onto your camera. Now, I am finding it quite liberating having a fair decent light backpack and also having my camera attached around the side of me so I can just literally just open it up and pull it out when required, you know, and that's that's quite nice. I do quite like that. But what I do find is I feel like I'm taking snapshots and yeah, that that's it's not quite so good. Now, perhaps to explain this better, I have to go back to the start of my whole photography journey and my first ever tripod I bought. Because to be honest, before I bought my first ever tripod, I did feel like I was taking snapshots all the time. And as soon as I bought that first tripod and started mounting my camera on a tripod, the first instant benefit of a tripod for me was slowing the whole process down and giving me more time to think about my composition. Now, I was shooting film back then, so that was actually really more important than it is now, because with digital, I can take about 10, 15, 20, however many different shots of the same subject and try and get that perfect composition. But it's quite a messy way to work, you know, it's a bit hit and miss. I suppose once my camera's on a tripod, before I even fire a shot, I sort of really consider what I want to fit within that single frame. So for me, the slowing down process of a tripod is one huge benefit. And I don't think you can replicate it handheld. And of course, another obvious benefit of a tripod, apart from the fact that it slows down your compositions, is the fact that it keeps your camera steady. Now, if you walk up the hills, you could be argued that you don't really need a tripod because you can hold it yourself. Because, you know, the light is pretty decent. However, as soon as you start heading into woodland where it gets a bit darker, or if you want to photograph at dawn or dusk or even sunrise, sunset, really, by keeping your camera steady, you're going to eradicate camera shake. Now, yes, the Panasonic has great in-body image stabilization. It's brilliant but it's still not as good as having your camera on a tripod. Another obvious benefit to this is if your camera's steady, you can shoot your camera at the lowest ISO possible. Now, whilst modern day cameras are pretty decent as the ISO goes up, they're still always gonna be better at the base level. So really what you want to try and do is you wanna keep that ISO as low as possible. Now, of course, this means that if you're shooting handheld, you're basically gonna to have to end up sacrificing something to try and achieve the same sort of stability. Now this could be depth of field. So you not, might find that you've got to change your aperture to a less than optimum aperture to try and basically keep your ISO down. So for example, you might really need to shoot at f16 to get front to back sharpness, but you find you can only shoot at f5.6 because you want to keep the ISO down. And you know, that's not good because that means really it's a compromise. And whilst photography is full of compromises, I'm not convinced that compromising your depth of field when shooting landscapes is the thing you want to do. So as I said, using the tripod slows down the process, means you can keep your ISO nice and low, 
so you get the best image quality possible. It means you can use a slow shutter speed if required. You know, think waterfalls. You're going to be pretty scuppered if you want to try and get blurry water and you can't use a slow enough shutter speed. And also, it allows you to control your depth of field. So really, so far, um, all I can think of is reasons why you should use a tripod. So, reasons to not take a tripod. Well, I think it depends on what your real main objective is of what you're doing. For example, a couple of weeks ago, I went on a world camping trip with the family over the Lake District. I'll put some of the photos up now. Uh, I was shooting film, actually, so it wasn't a photography trip as such. I just took a film camera with me. Uh, and what I did not take was my tripod, simply because I was taking my tent and camping gear and carrying extra stuff because I was with the family. So, really, the photography wasn't the main aim of the trip. And perhaps that's a good enough reason to not take a tripod. If you're not primarily going to take landscape photos, why add that extra weight to your bag? Which could actually make your trip just quite unenjoyable. But I'm not gonna lie, there were times when I really wish I took the tripod. But as I say, it wasn't a landscape photography trip as such. However, if I'm going up the hills and my main objective is to take photos, I really would not dream of going out without a tripod. And that's, you know, exactly what I've done today. And I'm finding it really unproductive. I feel like I'm just on a nice walk. I don't feel like I'm here taking photos as such, which is something of a shame when you're a landscape photographer. So for me, I will fully agree that if you are walking, if you haven't got a tripod, you can be a lot more spontaneous with your shots. You know, you can literally just pull out your camera and, and grab an image far quicker than I could get a tripod out my bag and get it set up. And then you can carry on, which is also great if you're walking with people on photographers, because there's nothing worse than the photographer hanging around putting his tripod up. I know that, I've been in for many years. And of course, losing the weight of the tripod is another huge bonus. Because really, the reality is, if you're taking a tripod up the hills, you're going to want something that's got a bit of weight about it, or it will just basically not achieve the purpose it's set out to do. It won't be stable. So, you know, you can save a good couple of two, three kilograms there, which all really mounts up. But I, th I think that extra bit of weight, it's, it's really worth it if your main objective is to take landscape images. So I think really, for me, I think the answer has to be to the question of, do you really need a tripod for landscape photography? I think ultimately, yes, you do. <laughs>
Thank you for watching this video. I hope you've got some promise. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And if you've got any comments, do you use a tripod, do you not? Please do let me know, I'll be interested to read them. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. See you later.